They came from as far east as Albany and Buffalo, and they practically emptied downtown Syracuse with a full-fledged Yankee invasion. They came from Opelika and Oakthorpe, from Montgomery and Mobile, and of course, from Auburn, the loveliest place on the plains. They came to New Orleans, undisputed entertainment capital of the South, to the Louisiana Superdome, undisputed as the world's greatest indoor sports center. They came to the 1988 U.S. F&G Sugar Bowl. It was the 54th consecutive Sugar Bowl Classic, the crown jewel of Southern football, now sponsored by U.S. F&G, United States Fidelity and Guarantee, one of the nation's outstanding insurance companies. And how sweet it was, this 54th Sugar Bowl, matching Syracuse, the men of orange, champions of the East, the Cinderella team of American collegiate football, winners of a record-setting 11 straight games, the first Syracuse team to ever reach that goal. Against the Auburn Tigers, the champions of the Southeastern Conference, considered to be among the six best teams in college football for 1987 and determined to prove that SEC football is America's best. The Orangemen of Syracuse were the darlings of the East. No one had ever dreamed they would complete an undefeated season, that they'd win 11 in a row, that they'd beat Penn State, Pitt, and Boston College. But when they did, and they did it impressively under the direction of head coach Dick McPherson, college football's 1987 Coach of the Year. Auburn would win its way to the 1988 USF&G Sugar Bowl with a season-ending victory over arch-rival Alabama and with a team that wore Coach Pat Dye's signature well, the team tough on defense, high on spirit and determination. And so the stage for another classic New Year's battle in New Orleans was nicely set. Syracuse traveling from the center of the Empire State in search of completing a dream season and a possible National Collegiate Football Championship. Against Auburn, the pride of SEC football for 1987, host team for the 1988 USF&G Sugar Bowl, continuing a long and distinguished tradition of fielding the best in the game. And ABC television, considered the best in the business of bringing live football video to America's living rooms, had a score of cameras working on its exclusive network coverage. And a near record core of sports writers and columnists jammed the Superdome press box, writers from the nation's leading daily newspapers and from the best in national sports weekly magazines. They were here poised to chronicle what would prove to be a thrilling game from start to finish. Referee John McClinic gathers the Syracuse and Auburn captains at midfield for the coin toss. Syracuse calls it correctly, and the Orangemen elect to receive. Auburn will defend the Superdome's north goal, and the 54th U.S. F&G Sugar Bowl is about to begin. Sophomore place kicker Chris Johnson will kick off for Auburn. The Fairhope Alabama native will send it downfield. And after a bounce near the 20, it will be picked up by Syracuse up man Roger Cargis at the 17. Cargis returns seven yards to the 24. The consensus All-American quarterback for 1988, Donnie McPherson, will set the orange for first and 10. On the first play of the game, McPherson goes to the air immediately to wide receiver Deval Glover for 17 yards. Perry Reed on the tackle. On second and 10 now from his 41, McPherson displays his agility as a running quarterback, gaining 19 yards and a first down at the Auburn 40. Outside linebacker Andre Bruce makes the stop. The flag was an offsides call against Auburn. But Auburn's heralded defense, as it would throughout a fierce battle, stood firm. And the second and nine sack of McPherson by left tackle Ron Stallworth was a clear indication of what lay ahead. From the Tiger 41, the Orange sent Cooper Gardner in to punt. 
The West Haven, Connecticut junior got off a 28 yarder. It was fair caught by Freddie Wiegand at his 13. Harvard advanced to its 36 but was forced to punt. First quarter action continues with Syracuse in control. Second and seven at their 31. Tailback Robert Drummond sweeps the left side for five. Strong safety Greg Stables on the stop. McPherson calls his own number on this right side keeper. The gain is for five and Syracuse has a first and ten at their 41. But again the Auburn defense gives an ABC TV national audience proof of its defensive brilliance as junior defensive tackle Stallworth blasts through for his second sack of the afternoon. Syracuse tries the Auburn right side, sending fullback Darrell Johnston on the second and 24 play. But backup linebacker Quentin Riggins holds him to no gain. The quick kick has been a part of the Syracuse offense all season. And coach Dick McPherson figures this is as good a time as any for the play. Johnston is lined up in a deep running back slot. He gets the pitch and he punts and he gets an orange roll. It's a 42 yarder and it's down by guard John Flannery at the Auburn 31. The Auburn offense gets the audience cranked up for sure on first and 10. Quarterback Jeff Berger sends a long lateral to wide receiver Duke Donaldson on the far right side. Donaldson in turn passes deep to super wide receiver Lawyer Tillman. On the run, Tillman carries down to the 10 where it's first and goal Auburn. The first down play lost two and then on second and goal for the Tigers from the 12 Stacy Danley goes up the middle for six but Auburn is flagged for illegal procedure. Ready, the Tigers are penalized back to the Syracuse 17. Second and goal now coming up 17 yards away. Berger the senior from Cedartown Georgia. He looks for the talented Tillman. Lawyer is open and Berger throws the perfect pass. Touchdown Tigers. Auburn leads with 547 left in the quarter. From ground level now, this fascinating view of the Berger to Tillman touchdown combination. When Lyle would boot the point after, and Auburn has a seven zip lead at the US FNG Sugar. And the cry of War Eagle will echo throughout the Superdome's west side lines. Syracuse failed to move on its next possession and action continues with Auburn facing a third and seven at the Syracuse 46. Berger back to pass but signals a cross between Berger and his receiver. Cornerback David Holmes easily intercepts and sets Syracuse in business at its 42. The orange sense momentum. Darrell Johnson now on first down gains seven behind good front line blocking. Second and three at the 19 and McPherson hands off again to the 231 pound Youngstown New York Jr. Again at the middle of the Auburn defense for five more. Second and ten at the Auburn 46. The college quarterback of the year on a keeper right side. Johnston gives him a key block and the gain is 19 to the 27. Alvin Briggs on the stop. Third and four at the 21. McPherson again on a pass run option. And the West Hempstead senior gains seven to the 14. All-American linebacker Kurt Crane makes the tackle on a fellow All-American. The quarter ends. Auburn leads by seven. But Syracuse is on the move. Second and eight at the Auburn 12. McPherson on the option runs left, then throws perfectly to a well positioned Deval Glover in the end zone. A completion and a touchdown for the Orange. Auburn's Perry Reed was flagged for interference, but it's obviously declined. Tim Vesseling kicks the point after, and we've got an exciting 7 7 tie, six seconds into the second quarter. And here comes a second look at the Syracuse touchdown from ABC Television's replay camera. McPherson's passing abilities played the prominent role in a remarkable 11-0 season. It would be no different at bowl time. And from ground level, another angle on the McPherson-Glover combination. The Syracuse quarterback enjoyed a fantastic season. He finished second in the Balladin for the coveted Heisman Trophy. The Syracuse defense sustained the momentum, holding Auburn deep on their next possession and forced a Tiger punt at the nine yard line. Brian Shulman back to punt. He's a good one and he gets off this 46 yarder to Tommy Kane. Kane at the Syracuse 45. Kane picks up a great block from Marcus Paul and he returns to the Auburn 42. 
Second and seven now from the Auburn Tiger 39-yard line. McPherson will find Gover open. And the gain to Glover is 19 at the Auburn 20-yard line. The Orangemen are seemingly in total control. But on third and eight at the Auburn 18, Auburn's rugged defense reasserts itself as Stallworth for the third time in the first half comes through with a critical sack. He dumps McPherson for a loss of 11 back to the 29. A fourth and 19 calls for the field goal unit. But Vessling's 46-yard effort will fall just short of the goal. It had height and position, but it needed a few more feet of distance. The Syracuse defense again controlled the tempo, forcing yet another Shulman punt. Kane fair catches this one at the 16. 47 yards on the distance for Auburn's very able punter. Syracuse in possession, first and 10. Sophomore running back Michael Owens runs the right side for nine. Carlo Cheatham on the tackle. From the Syracuse 27, first and 10. Tailback Robert Drummond gets the call and gains 12 at the right side. As good front line blocking opens a big hole. Briggs on the tackle. First and 10 at the 39. Johnston powers his way off the left side. Nine more before Mitchell and Crane bring him down. Syracuse doesn't mess with success. They stay with the ground game. This time McPherson on the option runs the right side. Gaining eight. Exchanges solid helmet butting with Al Briggs. Defensive pride begins to show itself on the Auburn side on third and four at the 38. Outside linebacker Craig Ogletree sacks the quarterback at the 44. Syracuse comes in with a punt and Cooper Gardner will get off a dandy. Ogletree makes a great effort to block, but Gardner's punt will roll to the Tiger four. Deep in their own territory now, Auburn is underway. We've got a third and nine situation at the six, and Berger will be passing right side on a screen to Danley. The gain is 11, and the Auburn Tigers are off on a critical drive. First and 10 from the 17. Berger throws complete to Lawyer Tillman for a gain of 19. This junior wide receiver from Mobile should be a 1988 preseason All-American choice. From the 36, Berger is passing again on a sideline route to Freddie Wiegand, and the gain is 11, plus 15 more for a late hit assessed against the Orangemen. First and 10 now coming up from the Syracuse 38. Berger is forced to keep under pressure, but somehow manages to turn adversity into an eight yard gain. First and 10 coming up from the 28. Berger on a nice bootleg, runs to his left and then will throw complete to tight end Walter Reeves for 11 more. Third and 16 at the 23. After a six yard loss, Berger will look for Duke Donaldson, but he misses and sets up a fourth down field goal situation. Win Lyle, an Auburn hometowner, connects on this 40 yarder with 47 seconds remaining in the half. It's good. Auburn takes a 10 to 7 lead into the locker room at halftime as a sellout Superdome crowd sits back to enjoy the performances of two outstanding university marching bands. Syracuse entertained first its 200-piece unit directed by Dr. Robert L. Spradling. came the Auburn Band under the direction of Dr. Johnny Vinson. 325 young men and women comprised the Tiger Band. We'll be back with exciting second half action of the Sugar Bowl right after this message from USFNG. Lane is down 14 to nothing, but there goes little Monk Simons. With a body of men like those I see before me, 
no company can keep USF&G insurance from increasing our business. Slay and Sammy Ball for TCU from his own end zone. Incomplete automatic safety. The company that renders the best and quickest service is the company that's going to get the business. And Harry Gilmer's running for daylight for Alabama. The successful insurance agent can meet and vanquish a competitor in a fair encounter. The rush is on, and Wilson may have to run for Navy. We still believe in doing business one way, and one way only, with independent agents. Georgia goes to Herschel Walker, and nobody's going to stop him! We at USF&G understand winning traditions, which is why we're proud to be the sponsor of the USF&G Sugar Bowl Football Classic. USF&G Insurance, insuring the tradition. Third quarter action of the USF&G Sugar Bowl is underway. Auburn failed to progress on its first possession, and we begin action with Syracuse playing a first and ten at its 37. Drummond carries right side for four. Stallworth on the tackle. McPherson now on a play action left side. Donnie passing to Glover for 16 more and a first down at the 43. Option right is the call now as Drummond carries on a sweep for five. Kurt Crane on the tackle. Four plays later, Syracuse is at the Auburn 27 with a third and five. Drummond will get the first down on a draw with Staples on the tackle. Second and nine now at the Tiger 21. Drummond runs right. The gain is 10 and Syracuse has a first and 10 at the 11. Second and nine from the Auburn 10. Drummond gets the call and gains six more at left tackle. Crane will make the stop. But a delay of game call becomes a serious detriment to the Orange on the next play. Third and eight now from the nine. Perhaps the most controversial of plays coming up in the Sugar. McPherson passes for Glover. Glover in the end zone. Makes a desperate effort at the reception but the nearest official rules it incomplete. Now let's take another look. Was it good or did it hit the ground as the official ruled? From the ABC television instant replay, a great shot of a very controversial play. Syracuse must settle for three as Vessling comes in and neatly nails this 27-yard field goal with five and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. We've got another tie. This time it's 10-10. Vessling kicks off for Syracuse. Harry Mose on the receiving end for Auburn. And the freshman returns 30 yards to the Auburn 37. Syracuse held tough, forcing this fourth down punt by Shulman from the 37. It's another good one for Shulman, 44 yards, and a fair catch by Tommy Kane at the Syracuse 19. Auburn's defense stiffens, forcing a Syracuse punt. We pick up action with the Tigers at their 41. Danley finds a big hole on the left side and gains 11 before Marcus Paul brings him down. Third and nine at the Orange 47. Berger finds Lawyer Tillman, and the pass is good for 17. The quarter ends with a 10-10 stalemate and a thrilling fourth quarter is about to begin. Two successive running plays gain only three yards, setting up yet another Auburn field goal situation. Win Lyle, the hometown hero, is more than up to the task. This 41-yarder will clear easily, and the Tigers are now up by three, 13 to 10. Chris Johnson will kick off. Robert Drummond takes it in at the Syracuse 8. And he'll return 17 yards to the 25. Well, Amar Rogers will bring him down. Quarterback Donnie McPherson readies his arm as the Orangemen settle to the task of coming back again. After a pass in completion, the Orange on second and 10 send Drummond on a right side sweep for nine yards. Free safety John Wiley on the tackle. 
Syracuse gets the first down and three more in the next two plays. And then on second and seven, McPherson will find Tommy Kane open for 18 yards. It's first and 10 at the Auburn 44. Drummond carries for 11 right up the middle. Cheatham on the tackle. From the 33, the Syracuse front line continues to dominate on the series. Darrell Johnston from his fullback spot gets 12 more and again up the Auburn midsection. Two running plays gain seven more for the Orange, but a third and three pass failed to connect. The Syracuse settles for a tying field goal with 8.53 remaining. Fessling's boot is perfect, a 32-yarder. The score is tied for the third time in the game. It's 13-13. Auburn's next possession began at their 29, but carried only to their 35, where Berger was sacked. Schulman was called on again to punt, and his next one is a 50-yarder, aided by an Auburn roll. McPherson now, on first down, rolls right, and finds Deval Glover for 14. John Wiley covers for Auburn. Second and eight at the 40. McPherson, scrambling under pressure, picks up seven before Wiley again makes the stop. From the 47, the Syracuse quarterback picks up the first and 10 on this keeper right up the middle. Second and 10 now. McPherson will go back into the pocket. He'll fire complete to Johnston for six. Greg Staples on the tackle. It's third and four at Auburn's 44. McPherson, under relentless defensive pressure, gets off another completion to Glover. 13 yards and a first down at the 31. But the Orangemen will lose three when right tackle Nate Hill will jump over McPherson on the next play. It's now second and 13 at the 34. McPherson, he looks for Syracuse's number one receiver in 1987. Tommy Kane, the Montreal Canadian junior, responding with a brilliant catch in a 12-yard game. In retrospect, this was perhaps the most critical offensive play of the game coming up for Syracuse. It's third and one at the 22. Drummond carries, but Kurt Crane holds him to no gain. A first down carry may have changed the outcome, but the Orange must settle for a three-point lead with this 38-yard field goal from Tim Vessman. And Syracuse has a three-point lead with two minutes and four seconds remaining in an outstanding USF&G Sugar Bowl. Vestling kicks off deep. Perry Reed gets a good return to the Auburn 25-yard line. The Tigers must now travel 75 yards if they are to win this 54th Classic. 159 remains on the clock. Jeff Berger in first down, passes complete to Duke Donaldson for four. Second and six at the 29. Berger throws complete to the talented lawyer Tillman. He makes a marvelous one-handed catch. The gain is seven. From the 36, Berger passing complete again. This time to Stacy Danley for seven more. A completion to fullback Reggie Ware loses a yard. But on third and four, Berger will hit Donaldson again for six. And the Tigers will have a first down at their 48. The clock is critical for Auburn. Auburn carefully mixing timeouts and out-of-bounds carries to control time as the drive continues now with Berger hitting wide receiver Scott Bolton for 18. Auburn is now at the Syracuse 34. Berger's next two passes are ineffective, but on third and 10, he'll get four on a completion to Danley. Auburn will call their second time out, and it's nail-biting time on the plains. Berger then sets the Tigers down on fourth and six and completes one to Danley. Perfectly thrown, over the shoulder, a great catch past two Syracuse defenders. Time on the clock is now critical. First and 10 coming up at the 22. Berger with his 11th successive pass on the drive. Completes to Lawyer Tillman for seven. 13 seconds remain. 
Second and three coming up at the Syracuse 15. Berger looks and then completes the 12th pass, a two-yarder to Danley. Auburn calls their third and final timeout. The decision is made. The Tigers, with just a handful of seconds left, will go for the tie. Win Lyle will connect with a 30-yarder. Only a second will remain of the game, and that one will tick away instantly on the ensuing kickoff. Auburn and Syracuse have played to a 16-16 tie, the first tie in the 54-year history of this New Orleans football festival. Some 76,000 have witnessed a classic US F and G Sugar Bowl. It just doesn't get any better or closer. And here are post-game locker room comments. First from Coach McPherson. We were thrilled when we got the invitation. And we were more thrilled as we could hang around here for a while. There's no doubt in my mind the second bowl game in existence is without a doubt the best bowl game. Because there's a chance for everybody in America to get here. And that's why it's the best, because it's the biggest, it pays the most. It has New Orleans, Louisiana, which is a fantastic place for young people to be. And uh, a lot of teams in America can dream here and they're not shut out. And from Pat Dye, all Auburn. teams go overcome a lot this year, and they overcame a lot out there tonight. I don't know how, how you saw it, but we ended up with three down linemen and, and uh, playing two freshman cornerbacks the whole ball game. So uh, I was proud of the way our defensive football team played against the great Syracuse offense. And uh, offensively, I was a little disappointed in the way we played. We weren't consistent enough. And, and uh, of course, Syracuse got a good, solid defensive football team. A lot of credit's got to go to them. I was extremely proud of Jeff Berger and our offense. In the coach plays, coming down the wire, Stacy Danley and, and uh, Scott Bolton and uh, Lawyer Tillman made the plays he's made all year long. But class, clutch, character, quality, whatever you want to name it, coming down at the end. And uh, that's uh, the game is history. You have been viewing highlights of the 1988 USF and G Sugar Bowl, featuring the 1987 SEC champion Auburn Tigers and the undefeated Orangemen of Syracuse. This program has been produced in cooperation with USF and G, United States Fidelity and Guarantee, one of America's great insurance companies, ensuring the future of the Sugar Bowl. And special thanks from the USF and G Sugar Bowl to ABC Television Sports and Mr. Dennis Swanson, President, for the use of action footage from their telecast. These highlight films were edited by David Snowdy, produced and narrated for the USF and G Sugar Bowl by Jerry Romig. From the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans, thanks for watching. <laughs>